Hey everyone, what's going on? This video is gonna be all about part three of the physical therapy evaluation, the treatment. So remember, I broke the physical therapy evaluation into four different parts, and if you need a refresher on that, you can find that right here. But remember, part one was the subjective exam, and this is where you talk to people, this is where you talk and find information and you gather uh, what you're going to do for your objective exam, which is part two. In the objective exam, this is where you do your special tests and your measures and you gather all of that objective data so that you can go down and find out what your hypothesis is or the diagnosis that you think the patient has. And both those videos I'll also put in the description below. So all four parts of this series of the physical therapy evaluation are going to refer to the low back physical therapy evaluation that I did. And you can find that video here or in the description below. Now in this case, remember from the subjective and objective, we had our top three hypotheses in which I thought it was facet syndrome, lumbar instabilities, and, and uh, muscle strain, right? And so through the subjective and then going into the objective and finding the measure, special test, ruling in, ruling out, I came to the conclusion that facet syndrome was what the patient had. Now, this is important to know to have the right diagnoses because you want to be able to treat the right source tissue. Now, source tissue, what is that? This is like a common term in the physical therapy language. So if you're interested in physical therapy, this might be a term that you might be very interested in. <laughs> Uh, but source tissue is basically like you have a bunch of tissues in your body, right? Like in your hands, for example, you have the skin, you have the nerve, you have the artery, you have the different joints specifically. So like the uh, interphalangeal joint, you have the carpal metacarpal joint. So all those different uh, specific tissues, that's what we call source tissue. So for example, in our facet syndrome now, our source tissue is the facet joint. So it's important to know which source tissue is the problem because that's what you're going to treat. And that brings us to part three of this video, the treatment. Hey everyone, what's going on? My name is Justin Lee, doctor, of physical therapy student and fitness coach. Here you'll find videos on fitness, physical therapy and lifestyle that helps inspire self change. This channel is all about lifting others and lifting weights. So let's lift for change, people. If any of this resonates with you, feel free to subscribe. And if you guys are watching this series, turn on that notification bell so you know exactly when this video gets posted. Okay, so at this point, you know you have a diagnosis or a source tissue, and then now we're going on to the treatment. But what the heck are you treating? Like exactly like what are you doing? What are you going after? And how do we, how, what's the thought process to get there? Well, let me tell you. So in the objective part of the physical therapy evaluation, this is where you gather a bunch of your special tests and measures, right? So throughout when you're getting all these measures, you're looking for what's called impairments. Now, this is another physical therapy language that you're going to want to know. Now, I was looking for a definition on the internet for impairments. And of course, you have to find the definition and then you have to give what like the explanation of what the definition means, because this thing is always like, oh my gosh, so many words. But anyway, I found the definition from the Nagy disability model, and this is what they define it as. Uh, impairments are the result of pathology or disease states and includes any loss of abnormality of physiologic anatomic or psychologic structure or function. So what the heck does that mean? Well, let me tell you. Basically, an impairment is anything that you find in the objective exam that you think might contribute to the patient's pain or why they're coming in for the physical therapy evaluation in the first place. It is important to know that an impairment should not be normal. So what do I mean by normal? Um, in physical therapy, there's always something that's compared to what's called a norm, okay? Or we're gonna call this normal, but in, in our terms, we call it norm. Uh, another word that you should know. Now, for example, like range of motion has a norm and you should try to get that person's range of motion back to that norm. So for example, in our patient who had the low back pain, when I did the straight leg raise, he got only about to about 45 degrees, but a norm for a straight leg raise is somewhere between 70 to 80 degrees. So that's what we call an impairment. Another impairment that we found was hypomobility of the thoracic spine or hypomobility of one of the, or several uh, 
segments of the lumbar spine. Now, what does that mean? Hypomobility means, hypo means lacking or less, and mobility is like mobile, so less mobile, right? Um, so you have a norm of what normal is, so the joint should be able to move normally, but then when it's stiff or hypomobile, then that's what we call an impairment. So when it comes to treatment, you're gonna be treating those impairments, and you're gonna find so many of them in your objective exam. And this is the big difference that differentiates between an expert clinician and just a, uh, I guess, entry level clinician, right? And of course, I'm more in that entry level clinician, but I'm trying to uh, improve my clinical reasoning to accelerate and get to this expert level as quick as I can. Now, what's the difference? An expert clinician will find those key impairments that the patient has and work on those things that they feel will contribute the most to the patient and help them get better faster. Now, an entry-level clinician will find all these different impairments and test all these different things, and then they will treat all those different things. Now, how much longer is the entry-level one and the one who's treating all those impairments, how much longer is treatment gonna take, how long the duration of those treatments, and how long the, uh, how frequent they're coming in to visit? Like, it's gonna be so much more than this person, this expert-level clinician, and that's why this one is gonna be more effective and efficient in their treatment. So as you go on in your physical therapy uh, objective exam, you want to try to limit and find just the key impairments that the patient has. Okay, so now that we got all that out of the way, now you have to look at the list of impairments that you found in your objective exam. And as the PT, you have to decide which one, maybe two of those things, am I going to treat that's gonna help that patient out the most? So for example, in our case, we had two impairments. We found straight leg raise to be not normal, right? And then we found hypomobility in the lumbar and thoracic spine to be not normal or hypomobile in this case, right? And so I figured, well, straight leg raise, yeah, that might be important to have maybe some hamstring length to help them with lifting. But if they're complaining of more stiffness in their lower back or stiffness in their thoracic spine, I think if we address those impairments, that's gonna help the patient out the most. So that's why I chose in my clinical reasoning, I thought that, okay, let's work on that lumbar and uh, thoracic spine and work on that mobility first and then treat in that area. And then once that gets restored and better, then I can go to other impairments like that straight leg raise or hamstring length or other impairments that I found. Okay. Okay, so now the actual treatment. This is where the physical therapist will go in and, and either put their hands on the patient, give them exercise, whatever, of actually treating what they think is going to help them out the most or treat their impairments, right? So now there are so many ways that a PT, a physical therapist could treat a patient. So some examples are manual therapy, um, therapeutic exercise or what we call TheraX, neuromuscular education, gait training, modalities, and a lot more different types of treatment. But for, for just the purposes of this video, I'll just list those. Now, what I did in my treatment is I used manual therapy and TheraX. Typically, a physical therapist will choose about one to two treatments for their physical therapy treatment. Um, I always like to do manual therapy and TheraX in every one of my treatments, and I'll tell you why in just a little bit. All right, so let's start in order. I chose to do manual therapy techniques, and first I did unilateral PAs to the lumbar spine or the facet joint. And PA stands for posterior to anterior, but that's short for what's called pavums. So these PAs, what I did is I treated what the facet joint, right? And it's unilateral, so that already implies that the facet joint is on one side of the spine. So I did unilateral PAs for accessory mobility of the facet joint. I'm not gonna go into detail about that technique, but you can learn more about that manual therapy technique in the video link that I, that I uh, provided in the description with the PhysioU app. It's free, you guys, so take out that free information and all that free knowledge. So with PAs, in my objective exam, I assessed that it was stiff, right, in the, in the lumbar spine around L3 to L4, so I chose to treat it with 
posterior to anterior PAs to that segment that I found that was stiff. All right, so after I treated the lumbar spine, I went up and moved to the segment above it, which is the thoracic spine. Now remember in the objective exam, I also assessed and saw and found that it was stiff. So then I went in there and I used the same PA technique on not, instead of unilateral, now I went central. So that I was pushing on more of the spinous process of the thoracic spine um, so that I can increase mobility in that region. All right, so after I finished the manual therapy part, I moved on to the therapeutic exercise. Now remember, I always like to do manual therapy and Therex, and I'll get to that in just a little bit. But just really quick, the Therex portion, I gave two exercises. The first one, I gave a two-point modification. One was, to, one was to lock out the lumbar spine so that I can focus more on the T-spine, inflection and extension. And then I unlocked the lumbar spine and we did a global flexion and extension with the cat camel exercise so that I could gain global mobility of that spine, right? And then the second exercise I did, I chose to do sideline thoracic rotations because I also found that the thoracic spine was stiff and I wanted them to have additional rotation, especially because of their function for golfing. Really quick, if you want more explanation on why I modified that cat camel exercise and how I, how I locked out the low back and just my thought process on that, give a comment below and I'd love to explain that to you. So both of these exercises, the cat camel and the sideline thoracic rotations addressed mobility, which is what the patient needed the most. That, what, that is what I found the biggest impairments were and I chose to treat those impairments. So in the Therex portion, I like to give three different things that I like to explain to the patient so that they have a better understanding of what's going on. I like to tell them one, which exercises we're doing, so make a list for them. Two, how to perform them, so the right techniques, because everyone's always gonna compensate or do it wrong, right? And then three, give a reason why. So what are these exercises actually doing for you and how is it helping you? And you can explain that to them either like physiologically, this is happening, or anatomically, this is happening. So all those three points are important because it helps sell those exercises so that the patient could actually perform them at home, which is what we call home exercise program. I'm getting ahead of myself, but that is part four of this physical therapy evaluation, home exercise program. But those three things are the most important things that I found that help really help the patient to understand and uh, it builds better rapport with you because it makes, them, makes you sound like, whoa, like he knows what he's talking about. All right, so now let me explain why I always do manual therapy and Therex in almost every single treatment session. Now, manual therapy, it is important. As a physical therapist, like I think there is value in putting your actual hands on the patient and moving them around or stretching them or anything like that. One, it feels great. Like it, it always feels great to stretch when someone else does it rather than you do it, right? And then two, it helps build that, uh, there's like a sense of just a therapeutic touch when you put your hands on the patient and you just tell them like, it's gonna be okay. You explain to them and as you're moving them, you're talking with them and things like that. It just helps build a better rapport. So I think manual therapy is super important, especially if you want your patients to like you or if you want them to come back. And manual therapy actually helps the patient. So that's a good area. And then Therex. Now you always wanna to try to put some time away for some Therex. First off, it's an actual form of treatment. So when they're in the clinic, you can actually just do Therex the whole time. And some patients might actually get better with that. So it, first off, it is an actual form of treatment. Secondly, patients are gonna have to do some homework at home, which is what we call the home exercise program, AKA it's called HEP, another physical therapy term that you guys should know, but uh, they should be doing their HEP at home, right? So when you take the time to go through Therex and go through these exercises, typically whatever you do in the clinic, that's what you're gonna have the patient do at home. So this is the double whammy, is that when you're doing the Therex, you can actually spend about five, 10 minutes being with the patient, explain to them exactly what's going on. If they have any kind of uh, compensations or just things that they're doing wrong, you can always be there to have a second pair of eyes to watch them, correct them, and then give them certain cues so that they're executing the, the exercise properly, right? And so it's super cool because you can do that Therex in the clinic and you say, all right, 
Now you're gonna do the exact same thing for a home exercise program at home. So the next and last video of this series is part four, which is home exercise program slash education. I went over home exercise program HEP just a little bit in this video, uh, but I still want to be sharing a couple key factors and key points that I think that will really help you guys. And also I really wanted to emphasize education and what physical therapists can educate the, the uh, patients. Because uh, at first I really didn't put that much emphasis on education. I was like, all right, you're just telling the patient, explaining what you're doing. But then as I started to practice and started to uh, go through my internships, I really, really found the power of what education could do for patients. So make sure to turn on your notifications to know exactly when I'm gonna be dropping part four of this series. If you wanted more information and explanations on like how to do those techniques, those manual therapy techniques, and also those therapeutic exercises, I provided a video link through PhysioU. Uh, again, free information, free knowledge, anything free, especially if you're gonna learn is, I think is always great. You can always benefit from that. Uh, but I just wanted to talk really quick about PhysioU. They're just, this app is just super, super, super amazing. It had, I've been using it throughout my whole entire DPT school career. And I think there are so many benefits from it. It's such a dense program that not only gives you just explanations, but there's videos to every single technique that you, that you need to know in the physical therapy world. And I found it super convenient because when I was in the clinic and I was like, wait, what were the norms or what were some impairments or special tests? I always had something super convenient in my phone or my iPad that I can just pull out and say, look at it and go, oh, okay, like that's how you do it. And then if I needed a refresher, I can always click the video and learn again on um, those techniques. All right, you guys, I hope you learned something from this video and gained some knowledge and it helped inspire some self change to either maybe change some of your treatment techniques or keep your treatment techniques the same. And then maybe even inspired you to say, yes, I want to go down that DPT road and become a physical therapist. You guys, I love this freaking profession and I love doing these YouTube videos and just talking about it. I could talk for days about it and I have to try to limit it for only a couple minutes because that's how long I could uh, hold on to your attention. But I freaking love the physical therapy world. And if you guys didn't know already, read it from my videos, but I have a huge passion in helping others, um, especially through physical therapy. So um, I'm just a huge advocate for this field if you didn't know already. Uh, and I'm just really wanna help inspire other people to feel the same way about this field. Literally the best decision ever. Thumbs up for that. All right, you guys, this channel is all about lifting others and lifting weights. Thank you again for being so positive and for providing this community. It is awesome. You guys are awesome. Change people, change people. That's why we lift for change people. Have a great one, you guys.